Hey, this is Paul Mazurkowitz, the drummer from Cannibal Corpse, and you are watching Loudwire. <sighs> Hey everyone, Gurhamid here from Loudwire, and you've been asking for this for quite some time. Don't say we're not good to you, because we have Paul Mazurkowitz from Cannibal Corpse here from Wiki Factor Fiction. Thank you so much for giving me some of your time today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. My, my pleasure. So, we went through your Wikipedia page, Cannibal Corpse's Wikipedia page, all that stuff. We're going to ask you what's right, what's wrong, and you can elaborate if you so choose. Okay. All right. So, it's listed your name because they do get it wrong sometimes. Sure. As Paul Mazurkowitz Jr. That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. I, right. am, I am a junior. I am the junior. That's so. right. <laughs> correct. All right. Elsa said you were a vegetarian. I am vegetarian. Yeah. I was not always a vegetarian, but I... How long now? Uh, about four, almost 14 years now. Wow. So I am a vegetarian. Yes. Me too. Oh, so. cool, man. Awesome. Very cool. Lettuce power. It said that Metal Blade Records signed you guys after the manager of the record store that Chris Barnes worked at sent in your demo tape. Yeah, pretty much. What was happening at that time when we were, of course, pre-Metal Blade, pre-signed, um, yeah. you know, just a, a band trying to make it or what have you, um, we made the demo, well, actually we made the demo prior to the show in, you know, we were only formed a few year, a uh, few months at this point, you know, okay. I, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself signing with Metal Blade. Um, that was in July of 89. We were formed in December of 88. Right. So we weren't really a band, you know, we were a band without a label or anything, only for a sh few short months there. But we had, Chris was working at a, a record store called Cavages. And that was a, a, it was a chain in Western New York, you know, and a lot of the malls and all that. And, um, and he, the guy that was either a manager at one of them or what have you, you know, that was the guy that kind of was helping us out because he had some ties. He had some Buffalo okay. ties. All the right. Buffalo ties being, well, Mike Faley, the president, well, you know, not the, I guess, uh, I guess he would be president, you know, Brian Slagles, the sure. owner CEO, but Mike Faley, the second in command, is from Buffalo. So we basically went through a little bit of, uh, you know, I guess going through the red tape to get, say, our, our, uh, sure. our uh, demo tape to Metal Blade, yeah. knowing there was a little bit of a Buffalo connection. This guy knew Mike, so there you go. Hey, I'm sending you this demo. Oh, mm -hmm. cool, we'll check it out, you know. So, yeah, th that is a, a true statement, and, uh, you know, it was cool to have a little bit of help in the early days. Yeah, like totally. That. All right, all true so far. Uh, of course, the epic cameo on Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Uh, it said that Jim Carrey personally recommended you guys to perform in the film because he was a fan of the right. band. That is 100% correct. That's the Beautiful. only reason we got into that movie. You yeah. know? And uh, yeah, Jim and, and a little bit of the director too, he was excited, but obviously I think it was, it was mostly Jim mostly really Jim. being interested in this kind of music and finding it intriguing and it was very exciting. He wanted us, you know, really bad, so. Yeah, yeah and they, like the best scene in the movie. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool, but man, yeah, looking back at that, yeah, we actually declined, I think, in the beginning because of, no way. well, it was a, there was a scheduling conflict. Oh, yeah, okay. we were still living in Buffalo at the time, and um, not that that mattered, but it was more of we had a tour booked. We were going to be going to Europe when they wanted us to fly down to Miami to do our scenes. Oh, okay. So we were like, we wanted to do it, but then we came up with, well, we don't want to blow off a European tour. That's been booked. We're not these kind of people just to go do a movie. Well, that's not that's not the importance here for us. Is you know, of course, doing our tour. So we said, man, that would be great. We'd love to do it, but. Sorry, the timing ain't right. You know, they actually moved shooting around our schedule for, for us. Wow. Right? They came back. I remember that saying, "Okay, that's fine. We'll 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 get you down after that tour." You know, and we're like, "Okay, if they're willing to work with us, then it sounds like they want us." You know, really bad. So yeah, a little side note to that story. Awesome. The Vile record. Uh, it used Cannibal Corpse's new logo because departing vocalist Chris Barnes owned and trademarked the original one. Well, it's a little bit slightly like that. I mean, to make a long okay. story short, he he drew the logo. You yeah. know, so that, that's all. He never came up with the name. That's that's known. Alex actually came up with Cannibal Corpse. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Barnes drew the logo. So that the original logo is on our demo tape. Is on our first you know the first four CDs. Yeah, yeah. Until we 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 booted him, and then he wanted he wanted to basically. Be, he wanted money to use the logo. 
Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I copyrighted, you guys can't use it. It was, okay. oh, you're going to use the logo. Well, I want to be compensated because I drew it. And we said, well, that's ridiculous. Right. So okay. let's change it and make a better logo, and we don't have to worry about that. Okay. And that's what we did. Okay, so there's no trademark, no copyright. Apparently just... there isn't. I don't, I don't believe there is. I, I, I think he was... I, I don't know, but I, I don't think he went that far. I don't think he went it that far. It was never far. like a legal action. No, no, but it was okay. more of a, you know, we, we bypassed all that, like I said. Him wanting money, well, let's just change the logo, then we don't have to worry about, yeah, a lawsuit or, or whatever. We can avoid any of that, and, okay. and I think the new logo is better anyways. So I, I, I agree. Think, so we uh, avoided that. Okay. You know. All right, so a little bit of fiction in there. Yeah. Uh, the Kill album cover, it wasn't gory like past ones because the band couldn't agree on a cover and you guys wanted fans to focus more on the music. Well, yes, yeah, slightly. Um, it, that one was a little more, in, I think, in, inside that we never probably really released. And I guess I'll probably say this now. Um, the original piece of the, of the guy holding the knife uh -huh. Um, you know, that's in the inside, you know, inside in, the in, in the tray. Yeah, you, yeah, I think it's in the tray. You open the tray oh, and that yeah. guy standing there with the knife grinning, you know, and everything. Oh. Well, of course, everything, you know, when you make records and there's always deadlines for artwork and things like that. And, and I remember we got the finished artwork and everybody was definitely not in agreement with this particular, that piece of artwork as being the cover. The, oh, yeah, okay. it was kind of half, people were, oh man, it's too green. You know, he, you know, it, it just doesn't, I, I thought it was amazing. I just look okay. at that picture and see that eye, I'm like, man, I'm, I'll put that on our cover, that's great. So we had a little bit of conflict amongst everybody. Mm. So we just said, you know what, if, no, if everybody's not gonna be happy, well at this point, we don't have enough time to say, Vince, start working on a new piece or anything like that. We have to, you know, we're, we're kind of in a pinch. Okay. So that's when we decided, like, you know, all right, well, let's, we don't want to not use the artwork because Vince spent time and all this kind of stuff, and it's still pretty cool, but let's do this. Let's put it on the inside. Mm -hmm. Let's just do what we did with Kill, you know, just to go because, it's, yes, I think then our mentality was going, you know what, do we need an album cover? Is it really that important? What more are, is can, our, we do? can our music stand on its own? We feel yeah, it yeah. should. Yeah. And we, we already kind of had a little bit of that inkling with the bleeding because when you look at the mm -hmm. bleeding, it was the very same thing. The that whole piece with the guy in, in the wall, when you see, that was supposed to be the album cover. Same thing. Wow. We were like, that's not a Cannibal Corpse album cover in our eyes. We were looking at that whole piece of art after having Butchered at Birth and Tomb of the Mutilated, and then we have this kind of serious, like, moody piece. It just, to oh. us, was not brutal enough, you know, and that was another issue. So what do we do now? Do we have Vince do a no? No. We, you know, what that whole thing is, it's just a close-up of the abdomen, abdomen of that main character coming out of the wall. So we figured, okay, people are going to look at it and go, what the hell is that? You know, it just looks like, um, who knows, it's a blood splat, you know, or whatever. They don't know. So, and the bleeding, there you go, was arguably our biggest seller, and it had a cover that did not replicate you know, our previous two, which sure. are arguably, you know, in some of the most intense covers there is, you know. Very. So so I, I, I think, yeah, I think our mentality was, of, I know it was, you know, man, the music should stand on its own. We should be able to release an album with no cover and yeah, say, here's yeah. the new Cannibal Corpse album, you know, because it's music. You're not, I, we would hope people are buying it for the music and not because of the visual, you know. Coming off the Wretched Spawn one, that's a pretty hard one to top. If right. you're going to top anything. Yeah. That, that yeah, is a brutal That one. one's brutal as well. Oof. So, yeah, I mean, I think we just, at this point, our careers were just going to go back and forth, you know? Yeah, we had torture, you know, and then we got something like Evisceration Plague, and then we got something like Skeletal yeah, yeah. Domain, you know? I mean, so I, I really feel, and, and we always felt it's not about the artwork. That's all secondary. It's always been secondary. It's about the music first. Yes. So. All right, last one for you. Uh, six of eight Russian 2014 tour dates were canceled after protests from Orthodox activists. Your gig in Nizhny Novgorod was canceled mid-performance, uh, so the venue could be searched for drugs. Yeah, that's it, it's pretty pretty accurate. There's just a couple minor things. We were scheduled for eight shows. We ended up playing four and a half. Okay. Four and go. a half out of the eight, so you, and the one, the, the half being that show right there. Yeah, gotcha. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the name of the that city. Was the, yeah. Maybe it's not. I don't know. It was so hard to remember those cities. That's, that's a hard yeah, idea. so, but yeah, so halfway through the set, we were cut short, you know, um, basically told not to play, and we were told that it was a drug search. You know, uh, that, uh, yeah. so that's what we were told. So, um, you know, after that all occurred, apparently, you know, 
I, they just knew what they were doing. Like, okay, you can resume. Oh, it's curfew, so show's over, uh, you know, kind of a thing. So, yeah, we, we, we luckily we got half the set out of that one. But it was it was really unfortunate for the other three shows to get completely canceled, you know, yeah, altogether. Sucks. And uh, you know, we were ready to go. So yeah, it was. Uh, and as far as we know, it was mostly the doing of that activist, you know. But uh, you know, th that's still all a gray area that I don't know if we'll ever really know the actual reason. You know, so. How were you informed that the show had to be stopped? Was it from the police? Was it from one of your crew guys? <laughs> it, well, it was funny. I remember because we're playing, and um, you know, most of us I would guess are not watching. I don't look out in the crowd. I'm I'm concentrating uh, what I'm doing. I'm yeah. not sitting here, you know, looking at things, you know, and things like that. So I was I think I was the last to stop, and I do remember it was in the middle of dormant bodies bursting. We were playing that song, and all I remember is looking up finally, I guess at one point, and George is, dude, stop, you know, because George is telling me to stop. Because everybody kind of, I think the guitars may have just stopped, oh, and then okay. I was like, oh, what's going on? And then I look, and there's, you know, seven or eight guys wearing ski masks and have guns and everything, and there's this, and it's funny, the other guys, I didn't, I don't know if I saw the face, but there's this one dude in front, and everyone was calling, calling him Putin, because he kind of had a Putin look, what? and he's looking at us like, yeah, if we don't stop now, he is going to, you know, do something, you know, because he's right in front, literally in front of the stage looking at us like, you know, oh. so we stopped like, okay, we have to stop. And, you know, there was a little confusion at that point. Like, yeah, I mean, what the hell? Did you know these guys were cops? It, you know, it, it, no, it, it didn't even look like cops. They look more like kind of military, oh you know, God, it wasn't dude. like, oh yeah, they're all uniformed. You know, they're just looking half bootleg in their yeah. entire and, you know, so we don't, you know, we're assuming it's some sort of authority, I guess. Um, but really, you know, it, nothing happened other than that. We were waiting for exactly worst case scenario. What's going to happen? Are we going to we going to get detained? Are we, I remember what, just okay. We got to stop. We go into the backstage room and we just stood there. Not nobody ever came in that room. Not one person came in there to do anything, talk to us, do hmm. anything with us. They stayed there. The fans were still there. They didn't tell the fans to leave. It was they were all like, okay, you can't be in front of the stage. Maybe there was searching going on there. We eventually finally went out actually. To, to clap and say sorry guys thank you and they were all still standing there holding their guns and the fans are clapping and so it was a very weird vibe to that even though it was something that seemed like it could have went wrong at any point it was when it was all said and done that was you know nothing you know nothing yeah. physical to us nothing you know said no questioning no anything you know so very bizarre wow you know, very bizarre very bizarre nothing like that has ever happened to us so oh. yeah all right well Thank you so much for giving me some of your time today. Thank you Paul so much. Paul Mazurkowitz, Cannibal Corpse, buy a skeletal domain, see them on tour. Thank you again.